Hey kids, welcome to Bergman Brothers Farms. My name is Will, and this farm has been here since 1925, where my grandfather and great uncle started it, and three brothers continued it. Now I'm here with my wife, Jen, my three little kids, Brooklyn, Cole, and Emmett, and we are just south of Winnipeg. We grow wheat, oats, canola, soybeans, corn, and pigs. And today, we're gonna to talk about canola. A beautiful sea of yellow. Those flowers turn into little pods, and those pods create seed, like this. Canola seeds, beautiful, beautiful canola seeds. There are three main reasons why we grow canola here in Manitoba and on our farm. The first is crop rotation. Every plant everywhere takes certain nutrients out of the ground, and every plant puts different nutrients back into the ground. So it's important that we maintain a rotation of these different nutrients coming out and going back in so that we can maintain a healthy soil for generations to come. The second thing is our environment. Canola really, really loves a cool environment. Not super cold, but not hot. And when you see these yellow flowers that are everywhere, what's happening is those flowers are turning into pods. And if it's really hot while those flowers are blooming, the pods won't form. And if the pods don't form, we don't get the seed to harvest later on. The third is economics. The seeds that we harvest at the end of the year, we sell them and get money from them. There are four machines that we really need to plant and harvest canola. The first is the seeder. Second is a sprayer so we can make sure that we protect those crops. The third is the combine, which is harvesting. And then the truck that's gonna take them to the farm and store them in bins until we've sold them. All right, we need to talk seeds and everything starts from the seed or maybe the soil, but we're gonna start with seeds. So we choose our seeds based on what we need to see in our field. And a lot of those times it revolves around having the proper genetics. The genetics are how things grow, how that plant reacts to certain situations. Have you heard of GMOs, genetically modified organisms? Pretty sure you have. We're gonna talk about that a little bit. So the plant, it's like a cell phone. I don't know if you have cell phones or not, or even a tablet. GMOs are like the apps that you put on it. It doesn't change what the plant is, but it changes what the plant can do. And that's pretty cool because we need those plants to do certain things sometimes. We need them to be resistant to bugs and moisture and disease. And those apps that we put on that plant really, really help. So we get our seed from a seed supplier and it looks like this. It's blue because it's coated with a protection for things like bugs and cold weather and extra moisture. So that blue seed, when it's in the ground, we can see exactly where it is and we can make sure that all of our seeding equipment is set perfectly to get the right amount of seeds in the ground and the right spots. When we're seeding, the ground's gotta be dry it's got to be warm enough, but not too warm and not too cold and not too early in the year because we run the risk of having that seed planted. It germinates, which means it starts to grow and starts to poke out of the ground. And then if a late frost comes, it'll kill that plant. Every plant will take different nutrients out of the ground and canola takes a lot of nitrogen. So when we're planting that seed, we put down some nitrogen with it to help it grow throughout the season. As that plant starts to grow, it's getting bigger and bigger. And there are some things that are trying to get at it, like pests, bugs, and diseases. So it's important that on our farm, we choose the right plants that have the right traits, the things that are trying to fight those pests from within the genetics of that plant. It doesn't always work. So we work with people who are experts in the field agronomists who know exactly what to do in all those situations. So this plant, which is about three and a half feet tall, it was planted eight weeks ago. It's grown that much in eight weeks because the conditions have been perfect. You can see the yellow flowers. Every yellow flower turns into a pod and these pods are full of seeds. Right now, these pods are not ready to harvest. 
in about two more weeks, these pods are gonna start drying off and the pods get really brown and dry. They get so brittle, that the pods just pop and all of the seeds come right out. To know when it's time to harvest, we need to check the seeds. So we take those brittle plants and those pods, we shake them out and get a bin full of seed. Then we take this little tool and put 100 seeds into there. We roll it out to make sure that there are no green seeds left. So I've taken that 100 seeds that we have in here and I put a piece of tape on top. Now we're gonna roll it out and see if it's ready to harvest. I look it over, there's no green seeds, it's ready to go. The reason why we grow canola is to produce a safe, nutritious oil to cook with. It was developed first here in Manitoba, which is really, really cool, and we call it Canada's oil. We can do a really cool test to see the oil that's inside the seed. We're gonna do the same test that we did before to check to see how many green seeds there were, but now we're gonna put it on a white piece of paper. Once you've stuck it down on that white piece of paper, you're gonna roll it out, turn it over, and you can see all the oil that just got crushed through the white paper. You saw those seeds getting crushed on the paper and how that oil came through that white paper. Well, when we've taken those seeds, we've harvested them, we store them in the bins on the farm, then we decide to sell them sometime, they go to an elevator. And that elevator will either crush them there or sell them to a place that will crush them. And we're talking all of the seeds getting crushed at the same time to make canola oil. Hi everyone, my name is Nita Sharda and I am a registered dietitian. This means that I help you learn to eat a variety of different foods, but also find out what foods might make your body feel the best and perform the best. Today, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time walking you through canola and the different ways that you can use canola products in your kitchen and day-to-day -day eating. Canada's Food Guide recommends that we choose foods that are lower in things like sugar, salt, and saturated fat. You might not know this, but canola oil is one of the cooking oils that's actually the lowest in saturated fat, which means it's a really great choice for you and your family in the kitchen. Healthy fats are essential. This means that our body needs them in order to grow. You might be growing a lot in the next few years, so fat is really, really important. One of the things that I want you to keep in mind is that when we're eating food, you get tiny little nutrients from food. And fat actually can help to absorb these nutrients a little bit better. Some of these nutrients include things like vitamins A, D, E, and K. You might wanna think of fat and vitamins A, D, E, and K as the bestest of friends. Another really wonderful thing about canola oil is that it contains a really cool omega-3 fatty acid that is really important for our brain, our eyes, and for our heart health. Canola oil is something that Manitoba is really great at growing, so great that other folks want to purchase it from us. Canada is the number one exporter of canola. We grow it locally, but share it globally. You might already have some canola-based products at home. Right here is a margarine that you could use in baking, and you might already have some canola oil as well, which is great for dressings, and I also like to use it for frying a lot of our Indian recipes. And then if you're making pancakes, it's always nice to use some type of an oil spray, and you can keep canola oil spray at home as well. So I like using canola oil because it's really neutral tasting and it's gonna let all those spices shine through and make it the focus of the meal. Thank you so much for taking time to learn a little bit more about canola and the different ways that you can use it at home. Thank you so much for coming to the farm today, for spending some time with me and wanting to learn about agriculture. I hope that you take away today that farmers just like me all across this country and this province are trying our best every day to produce safe, nutritious, affordable food for everyone. <music>